It's just support, Tom! They're picking up table five here with two players that, uh, been on stream today yeah so we're gonna have christian and drew drew you just saw on the grinding breach deck and christian we saw just a couple of rounds ago on the just control deck both the players ready to go in the feature match area one of these players is going to be walking away from the event and the other one is going to be making it into top eight well uh we're not quite sure if they're going to make yeah potentially <laughs> there's a lot of three and two as you as you saw and now standing there yeah so christian is actually the ninth seed and drew is the 10th seed coming into this one so there is one person who is three and two currently above them who does have to play this round as well and this could just be the difference between it i mean they're paired up against somebody who had a draw as well who is in sixth place so this could just wind up being make or break for these two players yeah that's for sure and uh looking like our players are good and ready to go uh i believe drew was on the play it's a couple of surveillance uh i think drew might have accidentally revealed something yeah it might have been uh just going through the motions pretty quickly here trying to get things done but we do have the judge nearby so we can double check on anything if we so have to but on the flip side we do have christian just uh Cracking a fetch, grabbing that double triumph set up, the Rafines and the Ketria triumph. We saw him doing uh, in previous rounds, and this time around, it's going to be just maybe setting things up for that ley line binding in case he needs it. Now, the uh, grinding breach deck, this is something that is a bit of a combos kind of style, Shell Akira. So, very quickly, while the players are still going through things, how does this one wind up working? So, how, how this one, the main way that you go through the loop is by using uh, grinding station to loop through, uh, I believe, Mox Amber with a legendary creature in hand, generate mana, and milling yourself out in order to win with a Thassa Oracle, which Drew just played on, on the view as a, I believe, Scry 2? Yeah, just a, just a little uh, Scry 2. So Devotion of X is 2 because of the Thassa's Oracle, but now we're going to start getting a, bin, a bunch of different cards in here. Malevolent Rumble being the cast here from Drew, starting to really try to come together and get a bunch of those cards that he needs for his deck to function. Yeah, so this deck really want uh, a critical mass of cards in the graveyard, uh, mainly because this is an Underworld Breach deck, and it's also a grinding station deck that wants to loop Mox Amber from the graveyard. So I th believe we see two Mox Amber into the yard. Uh, two grinding stations. Oh, well, as well. two grinding yeah. station into the yard, and uh, oh, that's a unholy heat. Yeah, so this this deck is one of the few that is still able to run unholy heat as just kind of the the fair kind of uh, removal card due to all the cards it's putting in its own graveyard. So this is going to be something that uh, can take advantage of the fact that with Delirium, that you're going to be able to kill fl uh, Flages just for one mana. Yeah, that's for sure. Uh, that's the one of the few advantages that this deck have. Also, and I think we just see Drew... Oh, just Fast Uh Thoughts Oracle Beats? Thoughts Oracle Beats is a valid game plan. There's only 15 more turns. We are fixing the life totals there. So it looks like Drew is going to be at 16. Christian at 15. Just another playing of a land and passing the turn. Screams of permission spells from the Jeskai deck. And this is more lands I think we saw Christian having in all his yeah. rounds previously. <laughs> That's for sure. But this is going Ooh. to be another powerful part of this engine here is Emery, Lurker of the Lock. I think Emery should have only cast... cost. Oh, only, Emery cost two here? Oh... Emery got met with a counter spell, but spell snare back. Emery will resolve here. Yeah, and this is pretty powerful because you're just going to be able to get back that grinding station or those Mox Ambers from the graveyard, Emery. I don't think there's any Mox Amber in the graveyard. So you need to find it. We can get back those grinding stations. We can get back that Mishra's Bobble if we need it. Yeah. We have a bunch of stuff we can do. Now, Mox Amber, of course, creates a bunch of mana. It's a zero mana spell that you can kind of loop back and forth. But Mox Amber and Emery also do a lot of really cool things. Yeah, that's for sure. Uh, Mox Amber uh, notably require a legendary creature in play to generate mana. Yep. So this Leyline Binding will take out the Emery and turn off the Mox Amber if Drew does get to it. And also, like, just ran these grinding station in the graveyard as well. So I, I guess Drew's just back on the 
Also, Oracle beats game plan here. I guess so. Looks like Emery did mill a second Emery in his graveyard as well. So that means that uh, Drew is just going to draw for Bobble. Uh, was that a Paseju he drew for turn? I think it was a Paseju. So getting uh, rid of this Leyline Bunding and another trigger of the uh, Emery is oh, pretty yeah. powerful. Ooh, and we have a Surveil Land that just winds up binning that Prismatic ending. So Christian Thingy is pretty safe here. Puts the removal spell in the graveyard. Gonna shock in a fa uh, shock in a land here, going down two additional life, and well, there's a one ring. That's there's a, a one ring. Good reason. Uh, so the thing is, the uh, grinding season doesn't really care about one ring protection because it's not trying to win by killing you. It's just trying to win by say I win the game. That's that's pretty true. <laughs> that is one way to get around the one ring protection is just uh, winning the game instead of having to deal some damage. But ring, draw, pass. We are going to see Urza Saga played for turn. Oh. And Drew is just going to say, you know what? I'm sending a message. Just thought this Oracle is still beaten. Uh, just sending it in. <laughs> like... All right. Christian just going to wind up drawing two additional cars off of this one ring trigger. Took two, uh, took one, so should be going down to 11 here as the players are updating their life totals. Just gonna play land, pass the turn. Yeah, and uh, Drew doesn't want to fire off that Poseidon just quite yet. He's holding on to it. There's another bobble. Oh, that wasn't Poseidon. Oh, it's a Shifting Woodlands. That's what that is. That still works with Emery. So Shifting Woodlands can just become an Emery and let... <laughs> Drew cast grinding station here. It could just become the grinding station too. Oh yeah, just a per any permanent. Any permanent. Uh, Drew still need access to a Mox Amber and an Embry for the whole engine to be turned on. So really depends on on what he he get to here. I mean, we have Delirium on board. We have Creature, we have Land, we have Artifact, and we have Instant, as we saw, a uh, uh, Holy Heat in the graveyard. So Delirium's online, which means that the Shifting Woodlands can be activated uh, pretty much whenever you need to. What we do need, however, is a second green source to activate it because... Oh, no, it can tap for itself, but then it'll just enter as a tapped copy of whatever. If it's a grinding station, then that will untap if we have a, an artifact that comes in. Meanwhile, yeah. Christian's going to be sorting through his lands here. Has quite a lot of them. Doesn't have a lot else going on, though. Did wind up drawing three now for the one ring. So that's six total cards drawn off of just the powerful four mana artifact. And, well... Oh, there's another one. We're looping rings. So, Drew, like you said, might just be okay with this. But Christian is digging for answers, basically. And I think Christian is also just digging for a win condition. We see a lot of permission. We see a lot of card draw, but... No wood condition just yet. No Flage, no Arena of Glory. Drew is at 15. Flage Arena of Glory puts him in bolt range kind of deal. I know that Christian isn't running bolts himself, uh, but it is still going to be something that could be just a big a big thing of just, hey, you're at three. Another Flage from hand or something like that could wind up locking up the game. So Drew's got to be a little bit careful if he sees Arena of Glory. But right now, just ring protection, drawing some cards, and... Drew had made a construct, so we do wind up having a 2-2. Two, two. There's actually not a lot of artifacts on the battlefield currently, so... Yeah, just a 2-2. Two, two. Yeah. Uh, notably, this Urza Saga will be able to grab a, a Mox Amber here. So, two out of the four-ish pieces that uh, Drew need to assemble to combo kill here. Soon need an Underworld Breach as well, but the, the, uh, by going through the loop... You would be able to find Underworld Breach. I mean, Breach is also just the way to start getting these things out of your graveyard without needing to worry about turning your Shifting Woodland into something. You just escape them. Oh, hey, why am I? I oh. don't really care about the One Ring here. <laughs> Drew might just be looking for a way to punch through damage in some later turns and just making sure that Christian cannot continue to accrue advantage off of this One Ring. So n now Drew just go on the fallback plan of Urza Saga beatdown. So... That, that's why that's why he hasn't been cracking these uh the Mishra baubles. Just wanna get his construct as big as as big as he can. So with that haywire might, I believe they should be five fives now as the Eldrazi spawn is colorless but not an artifact. This haywire might will be able to exile a one ring. It does not get rid of the protection trigger, however, but what it will do is potentially oh. put Christian down on things. And nope, nope. Oh. Double bubble. Does it change his mind? 
Oh, I think. Wait. Oh, we had the the. We had the uh, the tablet on the other side of the uh, of the board, which unfortunately was blocking tokens. Oh, I see. <laughs> so yeah, the, uh, players could just move that out of the way any given time. I believe we plugged it in to charge between rounds and then forgot to unplug it. So apologies to our players in the future match area, but thank you to Judge Charles. So we're grabbing. What did we grab from from Drew there? I think. There's a lot of stuff going on right now. I mean, now. Drew had the double bobble trigger. Yep. Uh, so, he found the Haywire Might off of the Urza Saga. Yep. And it looks like that one of those key namesake cards, the Underworld Breach, is floating on the top of his hand there. Oh, also, I think there's also a one ring in Drew's hand. So here's the Supreme Verdict. We'll clear, clear away this. Nothing, really. Just kill this Das Oracle. It kills the Oracle, kills the Construct Tokens, kills oh, yeah, the yeah, Haywire Might, which is probably well, going to yeah. get sacrificed here. So, so if I would draw from the One Ring in response... Yep. So, it does put Drew at 17, though. And Wrath resolves. Okay, so moving stages. Tamiyo! Oh, he moving phases because Drew had a floating colorless from yeah, yeah, yeah. the Eldrazi Scion. So Tamiyo Inquisitive Student comes in. And this is potentially a way for Christian to also close out the game because this will flip on over into a powerful Planeswalker version of Tamiyo, which will do a bunch of different cool things. One of which is going to be basically drawing your almost your entire library and you know, maximum hand size and finding you ways to win the game. Yeah, but... To be able to get there is uh, quite a tall order at the moment. Yeah, you need a couple of turns to find, uh, to get some clues here. But a hard cast force and negation on the one ring. All right, Drew just says that's fine. No, we have a couple of underworld breaches in hand, and we're just gonna. Heat on the Tommy. All right, we're just playing uh, on holy heat like it's uh, 2023. Yeah, yeah. That, that, that just last year, actually. It's not very far away, but we haven't seen Unholy Heat in a while, ever since Galvanic Discharge was printed. Yeah, I, this story is just... It's so warping, the the whole energy package. Uh, you can just play that in pretty much every single deck. I guess except for the, the Grinding Station deck. No! Oh, Another ring one three. ring. Ring number three for Christian. I mean, he has drawn seven or eight cards off of his other rings, uh, so it's not unlikely that he was going to find more. But now, uh, Drew kind of has... He has a, a thing to choose to do. There are some cards in Christian's hand. I believe I can count at least three, if not more. Looks like maybe four, actually. And Drew has, I think, two copies of Underworld Breach. He can potentially just throw one out there to get countered. So... I think Underworld Breach here, looking to get back Emery and see if we mill a, uh, a Mox Amber. But we'll get countered. Spell Snare is such a clean answer, and we see Druid Spell Snare in hand, so that means that that's the perfect card for Christian to have played to counteract that first Breach. Yeah, and the thing about the Jessica Control deck is they don't have good target for opposing Spell Snare. It just counters spell. Yeah, exactly. So... He's supposed to snare kind of stranded in, in Drew's hand here. I think, I believe he got another Unholy Heat and another Breach. So maybe we, we jam again next turn. Oh, there's the Flage. Finally found a win condition for, for Christian. Yeah, we had the Manama untapping the ring just in case, but now we're going to wind up seeing win condition for Christian hitting the battlefield. Flage, Titan of Fury, a Fire's Fury. So, would, would, would we unearth the Flage on this turn cycle, or are we waiting another turn? If we unearth the Flage, we still hold up two mana, but that can't fight through multiple interaction spells from Drew. And Christian might not know what is in Drew's hand, but he knows that there's going to be three going up to four next turn. Uh, the Shifting Woodlands is also something that we saw Christian reading as a consideration that can tap to activate itself, which will then turn into something. So if you play a Grinding Station, you copy a Grinding Station, yes, the land is tapped, but then Grinding Station says if you cast an artifact, you get to untap it, so that won't necessarily be a factor. Yeah, that's for sure. Uh, I think I don't think Drew is in the spot to combo yet. I, I think this turn cycle for Drew might just be make construct pass 
and hoping this Urza Saga finds Mox Amber in the next turn cycle. Well, what Drew has right now is the ability to basically, with a copy, uh, a Shifting Woodlands grinding station, you can then... Oh, he's going to actually copy this into an Urza Saga. All right. Interesting. So turning Shifting Woodland into an Urza Saga. So, okay, so do that on the upkeep. So on the first main, the copy Urza Saga gains the ability to make mana. Right. Uh, to, and to keep it around. So, gonna have another Urza Saga here from the Shifting Woodlands. I guess Drew might also be thinking that it might be beatdown time with the Constructs again. But so what I was trying to get at is if Drew has Breach that resolves, you can cast those zero mana artifacts you can cast um all of the those bobbles, right? those yeah. bobbles all in your bobbles. graveyard which will untap your grinding station and, and in theory mill yourself over into whatever you need but then you need to have the mana available to shifting woodlands into your missing piece you that basically gives you an infinite amount of ways to mill yourself yeah, I, I feel like that's just a lot of mana requirement. And unless you have the Thassa's Oracle, yeah. which we already know he's played one this game, don't know if he has multiple in his deck, that would be impossible to win from that point. Yeah, so at, at this point, you really need to get to the uh, the Mox Amber and find... And because you have the Underworld Breach in hand, if Breach resolve, you can get Emery back and just start making mana. Yeah. All right, so we are going to see Flage hitting the battlefield just the old-fashioned way. No Arena of Glory this time around. And we are going to have Drew end of turn cracking, getting a fetch, and we're probably just going to see a Construct being made, which is only a 1-1. Yeah, so we see Christian just putting the Construct down, helping Drew out a little bit. Uh, he's offering cut here. And Drew should be at 10 from that fetch. Went down to 11 from the Flage trigger. And I think we should just see a float mana from Urza Saga and search for Mox Amber. Or does Drew want to play more of a mid-range game plan here? And yep, so copying the Urza Saga again mm -hmm. uh, to get the ability to make a Construct and make another Construct with the other Urza Saga. So, Drew is all in on the Sir Saga beats. Alright, so we get a drum. spring leaf drum. So we have the ability. Shifting Woodlands has turned into Urza Saga, so it has the construct ability. So next turn he can do this again and then make it the third chapter so that you can find another zero or one cost artifact, maybe trying to find either that amber or something else to kind of go off with. So but it Again, he still needs a legend to make mana off of that. Yeah. So, and it, this this line of play is so mana intensive from from Drew, because you need to make the copy on your upkeep and spend two more mana to turn into a con turn into a construct. I man, this is rough. Oh, so we have a little bit of a war on the stack here. The Unholy Heat being pointed at the Flage, which is in response to a Prismatic Ending on one of those Construct tokens. But the other one did wind up getting Leyline Binding, but then a hard cast Force of Negation, and then he just shows that he has Flage Attack Flage. So that's going to be Christian wrapping up game number one. The prolonged game head-to-head -head goes to the control deck. Yeah, when, when you get into a game state where the game has been prolonged and the control deck drew, like, 15 extra card it's kind of fav control favorite for sure yeah uh ring into ring into ring was pretty solid uh one of those rings got up to three counters i think it was draw s it was like draw six off of the first ring draw two off of the second ring and then at least draw one off of that third ring so yeah as you mentioned just kind of being able to turn through their deck being able to find the correct permission spells when they needed them and unfortunately for drew's side he was just not able to find the pieces of his deck in the right order we saw him hard cast that thassa's oracle like on turn two i think it was yep. just to kind of have something um 
just to kind of have something to do on the battlefield and like to have something to do in the game state and thinking he needed to get a little bit aggressive with that and then just needing to commit all of his mana every single turn to activate the shifting woodlands to try to accrue small advantage value because his self mill condition was just gone yeah i, I think drew should have just commit to the the underworld breach line uh with the with the uh shifting woodlands can become uh if he, he got mox amber shifting woodland becomes emery and then he commit to the underworld breach line with grinding station maybe he could have got something there but I, I think prison just have all the removal and permission in his hand yeah and again we didn't necessarily see the pieces that drew needed to kind of start milling out his opponent as well uh, which is something the grinding station deck can sometimes do is that just milling yourself to try to win with the Thassa's Oracle we didn't have a loop or anything like that I don't think there's going to be I mean I know that we've been able to do things with like scrap trawlers and stuff previously Christian of course was also putting a lot of cards in his own graveyard and drawing a lot of cards so at any point in time his deck probably could have been below 30 cards so yeah. at some point if you're able to loop 10 mock uh 10 mox ambers or 10 uh mishra's bobbles because you have enough cards in your graveyard you could eventually mill out your opponent as well that's for sure so just a low came up a little bit short for for drew here i'm more interested in now what does the teamer grinding station deck have in the sideboard that it wants to bring in i'm probably looking at more permission spells as well like i'm assuming there's some number of mystical disputes or something yeah, that's probably uh, some dispute. Uh, probably there will be more force negation coming out from the sideboard. There's also surgical extraction could come in uh, for when one of those combo pieces hit the graveyard. Um, I don't know if they're on something like a resin piece or not. So that could be an option as well. I'm looking at uh, what Corey Baumeister has been playing uh, from the Grinding Station Breach side of things. Uh, mostly in the sideboard, we have no Mystical Disputes. We have Negates and Force of Negations. Uh, Pithing Needle probably is not something you necessarily need unless you really want to Pithing Needle the ring, which I don't think you really need because you have four consigned memories in your sideboard. Uh, there's a Veil of Summer, which is probably not coming in, but Soul Guide Lantern might be something you can find to hit one of those flages in the graveyard if Christian happens to cast it before he can actually bring it back like he did in game number one. I, I, I feel like Pithing Needle is actually like really important in this matchup. I think Christian was able to pull so far ahead because of those one ring. So being able to siding sideboarding in that Pithing Needle and being able to find it with Urza Saga could be could be a, a turning point for, for Drew. And taking a look at the, if this deck list is the same as what Corey Baumeister has on running, which I'm not sure if it is. We haven't actually gotten a chance to look at everybody's deck list quite yet. But both of those grinding stations that we saw milled into Drew's graveyard were the only two in the Corey version of the deck. Oh. So that may have been why we saw him hard committing to the Shifting Woodlands plan and maybe why he may have wanted to go on to the Underworld Breach plan there because he needs a way to get those grinding stations out of his graveyard. Yeah, that, that could be very true. So he just basically had Thassa's Oracle, Grinding Station, Grinding Station, and like the top 10 cards of his library and just unfortunately needed to try to find a way to win that game after they were all gone. Yeah, and like losing access to the Umbre immediately after playing it after fighting over it on the stack too yeah. uh, you, you fought over it it resolved and no both for your grinding station it just immediately get like line binding yeah so we are going to wind up seeing now drew on the play we'll have to see if he winds up bringing in any of those cards most likely the consigns and such are going to be very potent here they can of course also kind of stifle a flage trigger which may be enough to swing the game in his favor or at least save him for a turn if christian's going to be bringing one of those cards out uh, on the flip side christian We've seen his control deck previously. We know that he has a lot more permission. Uh, a, a couple extra permission spells in his sideboard as well. We do, sorry, just kind of listening to what Christian was uh, talking to the judge about, but it looks like because he had to go get his stuff from last round to sideboard, he's asking for a slight time extension for this round, which makes a lot of sense. Yeah, and I, we can hear the judge uh, adjusting the timer for, for our feature match area here. 
Yeah, as I said, this is one of those things where when you're playing the control deck, you are very conscious of how much time you have left in the round, because if you lose the game that you're on the draw, it's going to be very difficult for you to win the game that you're on the play next time if you don't have, like, Arena of Glory Flage in your opening 10 cards or something. Yeah, as a control player, I know all about the clock. <laughs> yeah, but yours usually comes alongside a Yorian, which is probably why you're casting modern instead of playing it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if Yorion was in modern, you wouldn't. I wouldn't be here. I, I'll be on your screen. Exactly, and you'd be taking up all the clock. Although, to be fair, it, there have been a lot of rounds that have gone over time today. A lot of them have been the Jeskai deck versus the Amulet Titan deck. The Energy Mirrors have been taking a decent amount of time as well. Yeah. Uh, energy, energy versus Jeskai in general. Like Jeskai, one of the better decks that was into against Nadu, has kind of now shifted itself to have a lot more board wipes to go against the Energy deck, and is now finding out that, hey, it's just as hard to close against this deck if we don't have Flage. But yeah. they also have Flage. Yeah, that's 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 the, the life of a control player. You, you can answer a lot of things, but like... Sometimes your deck is just full of answers and uh, it's not quite enough ways to close out the game. All right, so it looks like we are going to wind up having Christian keep their six, and Drew is going to open up with a shock and a Tamiyo of his own. So now we got Tamiyo batting for both sides. Yeah, so Tamiyo is important here because uh, this Tamiyo will be able to turn on the Mox Amber. Which is an important piece of the combo. I think like double Underworld Breach in here. Yeah, and Tamiyo kind of fills that role that Ragavan used to do. Yeah. Uh, where Ragavan turns on the Amber, would give you treasures as like a card advantage type thing, and then also powered up your Urza Saga constructs as like your backup plan. But this is why you're seeing Tamiyo turn sideways. It's a zero power creature. It creates uh, art. It creates clues whenever it attacks. You end up drawing three cards in a turn. You can flip the Tamiyo over, and then it starts doing really cool things like bringing back instants of sorceries, or eventually being able to draw a ton of cards for you. Yeah, uh, and the clues are actually kind of important in, in this matchup specifically, where you, you're you going to assume that you're going to be in a prolonged game, and the extra cards that are generated by these clues can really come in, come in handy. All right, so it looks like on upkeep here, Christian is going to fetch, grab a Triome, and then pay the one mana for Leyline Binding onto Tamiyo. So that is going to potentially prevent drew from flipping tamio over this turn yeah so just trying to prevent the flip or prevent Drew from generating more of those clues uh gonna see a fetch out of drew here Looks like uh, a it's shock just... as well fetch shock oh i was gonna uh, say he's gonna he might fetch for a surveil land and maybe crack the clue yeah, so but just fetch shock uh, let's see what he's ended up doing with the shock all right, Drew, what can you do when you have three mana available to you? That's a stomping ground. So access to two of every, any color that he likes. Yeah, he's got the whole uh, team of rainbow going on there. And we're going to be tapping two. Is this Besage you? No, Emery winds up hitting the battlefield. That's a pretty solid one to play. Uh, Mills over look like land. Tamiyo, Rumble breach no artifact no artifact there for tamio or no artifact there for emery but a second tamio actually winds up pinning the battlefield as well so now drew has been set up with multiple ways to turn on a mox amber but additionally multiple creatures on the battlefield now that can do a lot for his deck i'll take a Still. shock in from christian and a passing of the turn as well so that signal prob maybe ley line binding plus counter spell as well but uh, Tommy is getting to attack in for for a clue here. Could crack both of the clue and flip the Tommy over here. Might be what we're looking for. Drew is going to wind up fetching down to 14. See if there's a shock or not. As you mentioned, if there is an untapped land, crack two clues, flip Tommy over. Yeah, so going for the basic. So it does have access to double blue draw into a flip. Oh, I think that's what we're doing. So first draw from Clue. Uh, second draw. 
Oh, oh consigned a flip trigger. Oh, that's what's going on here. So Tamiyo will not wind up flipping today, but will still get to crack two clues. But now uh, Drew's going to be a little bit sad about that one. Yeah, because you, you really want to flip this Tamiyo against control and just start accruing value toward that that uh, ultimate ability that let you just draw half your deck here. Yeah. And we do just have Drew. We had Drew on 14 because of that fetch, but it looks like the players were accounting for different life totals as he is on 15 on their life pad. Christian going to fetch himself down to 15. Finds a plane. So now we got basically everything you want. You have double red, double white. So that's flage colors, especially if you need to escape that one. But we're tapping four. So this is everybody's oh, favorite. Way. Everybody's favorite, the one ring. Man, for uh, for something called the one ring, we see this one a lot. Yeah, we see like two or three or four of them per feature match area, as long as they're in the deck, which is most of them. And Drew does have rings of his own in their, in their list, so could potentially see it coming down from both sides. But this one ring again puts up protection. Not that Drew is really dealing any combat damage this game. Yeah, mainly here. Oh. Oh, a grinding station. All right, station hits the battlefield, and we're going to be doing this while the tap out is there from Christian as well. So, attacking for a clue. Unless there's like a force of negation or thing. So, sacrificing the clue, mill three. No artifacts, said Drew. That's a little unfortunate when you have the Emery to potentially start popping off with a bobble. Uh,. Oh, so we're going to sacrifice the clue in response to the untap trigger from the grinding station. Play a Thos Oracle. So this is a scry four this time. Yeah, so it looks like... Oh, yeah, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, scry four. All right, so we're playing the Oracle again. And we are picking up cards, so there's nothing else that's going to be happening in response. So Drew is not going for the win with this Oracle, instead looking to set up future win conditions. Yeah, up to one. Soon really need to find uh, any of those uh, mana producing artifact or uh, maybe like a, a bauble that generate cards. All right, so Drew does get to put one of his choice on top. Yeah, not quite scrying. Not not quite. But we are going to wind up uh, putting three on the bottom, one on top. Meanwhile, turn gets passed back to Christian, takes one off of the ring, decides to look at the next two cards by drawing those. Now, uh, Flage can kill the Oracle, can kill the Emery, can kill the Tamiyo. There's a number of things that Flage can do. Uh, a dress down would also be pretty good on Drew's upkeep. Yeah, I think you mainly want to kill this uh, this Embry here, even though there's no artifact in Grave. Uh, Soul Guy Lantern will wind up hitting the Underworld Breach, and this will strand all the Breach Drew have in his hand. Yeah, unless Drew wants to, like, if there's double Breach, you can throw one down now and maybe bait out the Exile effect from the Soul Guide Lantern. But Christian can see your graveyard and sees yeah, that you have no artifacts. Yeah, there's nothing in there, so I, I don't think you want to play the Breach out here just to try and enforce the Soul Guide Lantern. I don't even know if there are any spells that Drew is looking to cast with a Breach right now. I mean, we have a Tamiyo, we have some land, I guess Malevolent Rumbles, maybe something, but that just walks into the Soul Guide land. I, I think if we cast on the World Breach and then we cast Malevolent Rumble, maybe we can force Christian to use that, that Soul Guide Lantern. So, All right, we're sacking the, the clue. Thing. We're milling over. We see a ring. Unfortunately, that's all we see because of the way the Drew's graveyard looks. But he's going to target the one ring, make that castable. All right, that will bait it out. Yep, that will force out the Soul Guy Lantern. Leave it to one ring user to realize how powerful the one ring could be. Wants to cast that one into the fire. And here's the one ring from the Is that invert polarity? Oh, no. Yeah. Oh. Even I'll keep it. Even you keep it. 
Even he will keep it. He will keep the one ring. Oh, no. So that's going to gain control of the ring, choose new targets. Otherwise, it just counters it. So that's going to be ring for you. No, 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 no. Ring for me, says Christian. And that is the, the third ring for Christian now. Uh, or second ring for Christian. I, yeah, I don't game. think he gets the protection trigger because he has to be casted from the hand. I believe. Uh, let's double check. We do have the one ring pulled up previously. So it does say that when the one ring enters the battlefield, if you cast it, it doesn't, have from the hand. doesn't have to be from hand. Wait, but you gain control of it on the stack. So are you casting it? I don't think so. I think you just gain control of the spell because the spell is cast, then you're gaining control of it yeah. as it resolves. But at this point in time, I don't think I don't think the protection trigger matters. Uh, it's not gonna matter. There's a zero three thought uh zero three Tamio, a one two uh Emery, and a one three Thassa's Oracle. Yeah. Man, it must be heartbreaking to see somebody else draw a card with your one ring. Especially after you bait it out of the way to get rid of your other one ring. Now if this is the list that we think Drew is on, there are still two one rings in his deck. Not to be confusing, the one ring does have four copies in his list, which is probably also what Christian is using. So Christian, having drawn the most cards so far this game, wouldn't be surprised if there is another one in his hand. Yeah, just a grip full of cards. And uh, uh, we'll... All right, just a, a fetch land play for turn. Yeah, we're just getting confirming from the chat is uh, you do not get protection if you invert priority a one ring. Uh, let's see, Urza Saga take up to two here. So now free from the uh, the Soul Guy Lantern, you can you can start doing grinding station shenanigan once again. I mean, you need still need artifacts for it, and it looks like that Drew has three red cards and an Emery in hand. So is oh. that breach, breach, breach Emery? I I think. You can generate an artifact with uh, Tamiya, but Not right, now. right before it, uh, Drew passed into combat, Leyline Binding on the on the Tamiya. It looks like it's Unholy Heat, pair of breaches, and a blue card. I'm surprised to see Unholy Heat still in the deck. Hit cleanly answers Flage, I guess, is the only thing. So now we're going to see an attack for two. So Christian going to go down to 10. Now what we could wind up seeing is create a saga token, sack saga token to start milling, but then we're tapping two, we're tapping three of our five mana. So I don't know if we're just going to blindly start milling ourselves here. And it looks like Drew says, not going to go for that one. Passes the turn. Yeah, I, I think we still have another Emery in hand. So if we're really desperate, we can just legend rule Emery and keep the one with no summoning sickness. Yeah. So we know over anything castable. So I guess what Drew is looking for now is hold up interaction and then end step, make a token, mill cards away by sacrificing the token at any point in time with the grinding station, casting Emery for one on his turn thanks to that construct token, getting additional mills, and then seeing if he can pop off from there. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, I mean, it's, it's a really thin line. A third one ring for Christian. Now, the worst part about this one ring protection trigger is that Grinding Station does have to target. And since we have our Thassa's Oracle, no no sort of shenanigans being able to, like, kill that and bring it back. We, we, we have Unholy Heat that can kill our own Thassa Oracle. And then we can just Underworld Beach it back. All right, if we could do that, then we could, we could, or we can heat our own Oracle once we get Delirium because we do yep. only have a one ring in our graveyard now. We are going to have an Urza Saga, so that'll be three out of our needed four for Delirium. And then we could mill with the Emery, yeah. Do it. But another Urza Saga. Are we back on the Urza Saga beatdown game plan? Search. I mean, this is just creating the token, so this is going to ensure that like our Emery casts for one. This is going to ensure that we have an artifact count that we need if we need to use these to sack with our grinding station. Uh, and this is going to, most importantly, I'm interested in not sacking one of these before we search. Because this is whenever it comes into play. Okay, so we get a trigger on the grinding station. Are we going to s float a mana with a construct, sack a construct, or sack the springleaf drum? Because that'll give us a blue mana to play our emery and start milling some more things. I think you can just tap the, um, oh, nothing. 
right? Just go straight to land drop. All right, just yeah, straight to land drop. All right, so we're not doing any sort of shenanigans with that untap from the grinding station. Yeah, no, no instant speed play here. And it looks like the life totals have been updated by the players. Should be seven for Christian and 13 for Drew. So just catching up to what their life pads say here by activating our little tablet on the side. Yeah, it, Christian been taking a, a bunch of damage uh, from not, the not, multiple like, copies from of the one multiple ring. one ring that he got. Uh, life total isn't really a worry in this match. Oh, All right, we're getting force negation on the ring that Drew is targeting with the Emery in our graveyard. And go ahead. Yeah, just a passing back of the turn. All right. Yeah, so there's no no counters on that ring anymore. Drew remembering there were two on the last ring. Of course, when you see multiple one rings, you what the heck and oh. Oh, here's the some... Actually, this isn't that bad. So we're we're gonna start grinding station this construct. Mill myself. All right, we get Shifting Woodlands, Urza Saga, or is that a fetch line? I don't know. Oh, and the Veil of Summer actually yeah. came in here. I mean, in the, in the turn you want to resolve under World Breach, uh, Veil of Summer can come pretty, in pretty handy. All right, so we are basically on Breach. We have Emery we can cast for one, and then we can activate the Emery with Springleaf Drum so we can, you know, just go mono neutral on that card if we want to. What can Drew do to try to win the game here? Oh, Mistress Bobble Hand is also a pretty powerful effect here. Yeah, yeah that will be able to untap the grinding station. And if Drew wants to sacrifice the Bobble to the, the grinding station, that's three extra cards in his graveyard. Christian on the opposite side, though. Plethora of cards in him from the multiple rings he's been wearing all game. Let's see if this Emery actually resolves to the five he has in hand. And that's going to be Counterspell on Emery. And I don't think Drew have a spell stare in hand. Those might have come out. Yeah, Set. so just counter the Emery. Emery hits the graveyard. Do, do we commit to an Underworld Breach here? Uh, look like Christian tapped out. We have one land left on Christian's side, so Underworld Breach could be still met with Spell Snare. Yeah, that could, could signal Spell Snare, so... And I would... Suppose I should be saying it in this matchup. There's oh, there, there it is. is. Oh, Christian just have everything. All right, so if you're Christian, the only thing you don't have is a flage. Yeah, no, no way to end the game just yet. Right, we're cracking the bobble so we can get a draw. Christian takes one from this ring trigger. Drew draws a card off of his bobble trigger. Christian now. Digging for Flage, finds a land, and I don't know what else that was off the top. He's got so many cards in hand. Oh, we have a Soul Guide Lantern off the top from Drew as well. It looks like we have Supreme Verdict and a land and a couple of other cards in Christian's hand. Oh, just pass back to Drew. Is that a one ring that Drew drew as well? Yep. Drew drew a one ring. Just drew a one ring. And what will Drew do with his mana? Soul Guide Lantern here. Yes. All, right, all right, so we're starting off with the Soul Guide Lantern. This is just going to... No no Flage, so couldn't quite get the value, but it will prevent any any Flage from staying in the graveyard. And the one just get met with another Counter Spell. All right, so we have Counter Spells galore. A Soul Guide Lantern has resolved, and the most important thing for me is that we have really not seen this grinding station grinding anything. I'm surprised because there's still Unholy Heat and Underworld Breach in Drew's hand. So at this point in time, you have rings, you have baubles, you have things in your graveyard that you can start bringing back. To oh, that's another one. So this is like the part I'm worried about now because now this one ring protection trigger winds up hitting and now you can no longer mill your opponent so i am I'm, I'm waiting to see if now that drew thinks like okay you've tapped out for you know your umpteenth one ring what else could you have in hand or emery off the top is great but this is also now what do i want to oh solitude is going to be flashed in is this just is this just 
resolves uh, still end step, I'll heat it. Oh, okay, this is on end step. Oh, so do end step. So just flashing the assault to as a threat, and then get met with assault, uh, with a unholy heat. I'm just interested as to why we haven't used this. So if we're Drew, we're digging for things to just deal enough damage to Christian at this point. So I'm wondering if we are going for a value breach. We have a Mishra's Bobble in our graveyard, right? I, I don't know if we have anything that does direct damage to Drew. I'm just wondering if we Mishra's Bobble mill ourselves and then turn get our shifting woodlands back. Oh, but, ooh, Obsidian Charma hitting the battlefield. All Interesting right. that this came in. Interesting that this came in, but I, you can't really cast it for the reduced cost. So is is this just coming in as a additional threat? I think it's just destroying a land because you can reduce it for Saga. It can kill Saga. It kills Shifting Woodland. And I guess at this point, you could also uh, maybe okay. try to strand Drew on green mana. But at this point, I mean, right now it's just a 4-4 dragon. And that might be good enough here. And, uh, like we see, do you play a saga right after the city Charmol came in? But, like, Drew just haven't been doing anything. It's been a rough one for the Breach deck. We've had the hard cast Thassa's Oracle multiple times already. We have this Emery in hand that we're also not casting and this may just be my inexperience with the format and the breach deck in and of itself but i feel like there could have been a point in time oh, it's like christian discarding the hand size and just throws a verdict on the battle onto the graveyard here but i feel like there was a point in time we could have played a breach recast mishra's bobble a bunch and just drawn however many cards so what christian at four do we just make two orders of construct and see and go I'm going to try and kill you with combat damage. I mean, there's still a charm on the way. Uh, we have an Emery, so Emery's actually going to resolve here. So Emery now will turn on Mox Amber. The Emery is going to mill four cards away. So, Andrew trying to assemble everything he needs here. If the Underworld Breach resolved, that is just the combo line. Uh, so, mill for Emery. Put Moss Amber Bobble into the graveyard. And then two unknown cards. Looked like a land in something else. But now... Now do we jam? Oh, two mana. Here's the Underworld Breach. We, we does jam Underworld Breach here. There's another Spell Snare. One mana interaction again. These Spell Snare have been so good for Christian. Now we just jam a Tamiya. So now... I feel like, yeah, we're going to start making constructs and just kind of hoping. And we have no flying blockers. Unholy Heat is live to kill the Obsidian Charma. But if Charma attacks, we get Flage coming back. It's going to be very difficult. Ooh, Solitude coming in as well. What are we hitting? I'm hitting Tommy. <sighs> that's, I believe that's going to cause... Uh, Zero, uh, zero life gain as well. Zero life gain, and that was on Drew's end step, so now the Solitude can rumble as well. This is seven damage coming across. That'll put Christian to six and Drew to two. All right, Drew. Oh, and show him the play. Uh, in response, I'll... Draw a card. Draw with... Is that... Is that subtlety? No, it's not. It was nothing. That's going to be Christian taking game number two and taking the round two to zero. Just guy control rumbling, stumbling across the finish line against the teamer breach deck. Yeah, when you uh when you have five one rings, uh you just had all the answer in the world. Yeah, that was uh a